Hello pilots and welcome back to another X-Wing flight video brought to you by Out of Art Gaming. As always, my name is Phil and this is round three of the commentary wars. Now, joining me in commentating this game, we have... Hi guys, I'm Amy, happy to be back. Hi Amy, welcome back. Uh, it's going to be quite an interesting one going through this. Hi. It's <laughs> as we actually have me versus you for this game. So this is game three of the commentary wars. And we have a classic Republic versus Separatist showdown. So it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top here and who flies the best. So I think it's all going to be quite fair if you go through your own list, as you're obviously quite familiar with the Separatists and it being your own list, you might have be able to give some insights in why you chose what you flew. Yeah. Uh, okay, so as you said, I've got the Separatists. So I have got General Grievous in the Bellabub with Kraken, Composure and Solus One. And I have got one, two, three, four Separatist drones in the Vulture Droids and one Trade Federation. And all of them have got exactly the same upgrades. All of them have got grappling struts and those very powerful energy, energy shell charges. Yes, they are quite Sorry. powerful. <laughs> So quite quite a <laughs> typical separatist list, lots of ultra droids. Um, and I decided to go with four ETA 2s. So we've got Ala Secura with R4 Astromech, Heightened Perception and Dead Eye Shot. Shaq T with R4 Astromech and Dead Eye Shot. And two Jedi Generals, both with R4 Astromech and Heightened Perception. So very much a multiple version of each ship in there. So it's going to be quite interesting to see whether it's the cheap and resourceful droids or the slightly more expensive and forceful Jedi that come out on top on this one. So obviously, again, you're a big fan of the Separatists. Um, what made you decide to pick the Vultures over, say, Hyenas or HMPs or even Tri-Fighters? Um, I chose this one because it was a favourite for me to physically fly when the studio was still open, um, obviously way before lockdown and everything. Yeah. They just look cool on the board. Um, Vulture droids, I love having that um, added thing with the grappling struts of being able to sit on top of an asteroid and think, yeah, it's okay, I'm just going to sit here and turn around and just be sassy about it. You know, I'm going to put a few shots out here and there. Um, and Grievous, it's, yeah, it's Grievous. I couldn't say no to him. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I thought that would be quite nice. I do like flying a lot of ships with hardly any upgrades on them. Just have the extra firepower and more chances to attack. Um, mm. And as regards to the Hyena Bombers and the Tri-Fighters, I've not actually flown them yet. I haven't bought the expansions and I haven't had the chance to make up some lists or pop them onto TTS yet but it is on my to-do list to fly um but yeah this is one of my favorites and I thought yeah why not I'll go for it fair enough I mean it is an interesting list I've a lot of vultures although they can pop fairly easily as you said there's a lot of shots to come out there it's a bit of a shame you you just missed your first opportunity to land on that asteroid there by millimeters which from my side of the board, I'm going, you know what, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm glad you missed that initial <laughs> trigger there. Um, so it's definitely definitely an interesting one. A lot of ships there, as I said, they can go down quite easy, but it's still not going to be, you still got to put the fire into them to actually start taking them down. So it'd be definitely worth seeing how well they go. So like I said, I've got the ETA 2s and I love this ship. Um, it's just a really cool ship, and I thought it'd be quite fun to see how a swarm of them would hold up um, against, well, especially Separatists. I thought it'd be quite an interesting one to see, so it's definitely going to be worth seeing how this game ends up going. So yeah, what was... It was a very, very fun list. <laughs> a yeah. very, very fun list. Um, if very fun game sorry yeah it was quite fun it's quite entertaining and a lot of force power which i quite like 
So what was your plan, then? What was your thinking in approaching this list of this game? Uh, kill all the Jedis? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Because um, you kept all four of them together, I wasn't too sure where you were going to place your ship. So I thought to myself, right, I'm going to pop them along the edge of the board and just see where you move and then try and come in towards you. Um, of course, you stuck quite close to the edge of the board. So the ones that are at the top of the, the screen need to do a little bit of catching up. Um, do you know what? I can't. I think it was, yeah, just see where you were going and see if I can focus fire down a couple of ships. Yeah, I mean, those energy shell charges that you've got on there are quite scary. I'm not going to lie. They, they're, um, they're very efficient, shall we say. <laughs> Um, which is not something I was looking forward to. Unfortunately, you've got quite a wide spread then. I was, my idea would be to try and get him to the side or behind you, but again, those droids are so manoeuvrable. They've got some really quick, fast turnaround abilities. Is it the is it a 1K or a 2K they have? Uh, they've got a 1K and two Talon rolls. Yeah, so they, they can turn around so quickly, which is quite scary. And that's even without ha having landed on a rock and using their grappling strikes and just turning around 90 degrees. So it is quite it is quite scary. And couple that with Kraken as well, a very expensive upgrade that just allows you to keep hold of those calculates. Just It's just it's rude. I can see why it's 11 points, though, because it is very good. I mean, it's... I mean, that upgrade alone is oh, like yeah, half the points good. of a Trade Federation drone. So, but yeah, it's definitely, <laughs> definitely going to be interesting. And Grievous as well. He's just, he's just quite frustratingly scary, especially with Soulless One. He's going to be a tough yeah. cookie to crack. Yeah. I think having the combination of Kraken with um, Networked Calculations, which is there as standard on all of the droids, is a really nice combination to have, especially when you're, um, like, say, for example, in the next set of rounds, you can stack your calculations. Yeah, I mean, it very much plays into that separatist, um, like, combining the power of the ships, because, again, individually, each ship isn't that great, but in a swarm, when you can really start moving those calculates around and sharing them and then keeping hold of them with Kraken and getting that continuous weight of fire, that's where they start really becoming quite powerful. Yeah. And we do have our first shot here. So I think one of the advantages I have is the initiative advantage and being able to shoot first. So I'm hoping to get as much damage in straight away. Unfortunately, with our Eta 2s here, their, their dice are a bit interesting. They get two dice normal, and they get three if it's in the bullseye. So you've got to fly them quite... You've got to fly them quite well to be able to really get the firepower in there. But we do have two hits. And that's sort of the expected result. One, one damage on one drone. Would have preferred a little bit more, but... We'll have to see what comes in. Yeah. And unfortunately, with your with your initiatives all being lower than mine, it makes heightened perception a complete waste of time in this list at this time. But yeah. it's just one of those things that happens, really. But we've got another shot coming in, going in again at blue. So just the one. And absolutely okay. fine. Yeah, we kind of expect that one one hit with three of eight dice. You kind of, I think three of eight dice is a nice amount to have. You can normally get good results. When you start adding more dice, that's when they start really betraying you. Yes. As, we, as we saw in your game against Quinn, I think he had five or six of eight dice at one point and still suffered damage from that. Yes. Which was insane. <laughs> so 
So as we said, this is obviously part of the Commentary War series um, where myself, Amy, Quinn, Fergus and James are having a 10 round Robin. Uh, so playing each other all once and whoever well, we're going on MOV and the top four will go through to the top cut and the fifth person who we will see where that ends up um, will obviously be stepping out and probably doing more commentary duties on that. Uh, we've had quite a few games recorded now and this is the third one we're bringing to the channel and so far it is shaping up to be quite an interesting tournament. We've got some very good games uh, lined up for you in the future. Some more aggressive play from Amy, as always. Yeah. <laughs> it has been really nice to get some, well, quite a lot of games in over the past, uh, especially the past couple of weeks with lockdown. Yeah. So, yeah. Ooh, ooh. that is a. <laughs> that is uh, not what you want to see. And that's on a sharp T. So, that's a hit and a crit going straight through onto a three chip. Three hold Eta two, not great. And that's a crit. That's a direct hit. Oops, sorry, sorry, Shakti. <laughs> so in the first round of shooting, we've already lost a Jedi. Order sixty six definitely seems to be in play here. <laughs> uh, I think for oh me, gosh. what was most frustrating is Shakti is probably my favourite. Better to pilot. I think her ability is fantastic, and I don't get to use it. So the ability to save those focus or evade tokens by spending a force is fantastic. And yeah, it's definitely made this game already going to make this game a lot harder for me. There. Yeah, I have to admit, when I, once I took Shakti off the board, I did feel really bad because I didn't realise until then that it was your favourite ship. I felt so bad. I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. I mean, to be honest, that, that's the aim of the game, isn't it? To get the yeah. opponent's ships off the board. Um, I mean, if it was soon to fail, I'd probably be a bit more upset with you. Um, <laughs> and I think you'd be upset with yourself as well. I know you're a big fan of soon to, but yeah. again, that's the aim of the game is to get those ships off the board. And I mean, that was an insane roll. And to get that direct hit straight away, it's insane. I mean, that's what those energy shell charges are there for, to just cause pain. And here is some more pain coming in. So my hope is that you just run out of energy shell charges at some point, but I know that you can recharge them. Yeah. And that's another crit coming through. <laughs> and I believe that's on green. And that one is a hull breach there. So, again, not a great crit to get there on a three-hole <laughs> ship. So all damage cards coming through now will be face-up. So, so far, it has been a very powerful start to the game for you there. Yeah. And that was, that was, only, two, that was only two ship shooting, which is what makes it even scarier. Yeah, I didn't actually realise how aggressive my lists or my flying boss until starting the commentator was, especially um, with the game against Quinn. With yeah, oh, oh, myself flying everything in fast. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, myself and James, we were very impressed with how aggressive it was and how well a it panned out for you, and b how difficult it actually does make to play against that because I, I don't think there are times where you see the list joust and yeah. it normally comes out better for one or the other um, but it, you almost ex I think both players almost expect the joust whereas when you were flying the interceptors you don't tend to expect the Empire to joust like that, you expect them to be nimble and manoeuvre around and I think it really threw Quinn off there as to what you were actually doing. And suddenly he's there like, okay, I, I've got ships I need a bit more space for and I don't have that anymore. And you were willing to sacrifice that maneuverability for just pure firepower and aggression. And it really panned out for you in that game. So 
it'll be interesting to see if you can replicate that with these droids. And to be honest, I mean, if you're shooting remains like that, this video is probably going to be very short. So, <laughs> I mean, we are less than 15 minutes into the game and I've already lost a quarter of my fleet. So it's definitely not how I was expecting this early engagement to go. Um, yes, the attitudes are potentially quite fragile, not having any shields, but you still expect three of eight dice to do all right with the force and the focus. Yeah. So, I mean, I've definitely come to learn recently how fickle the green dice can be when they are in a digital format. Yeah, the dice gods are not with digital dice. No. I have learned that as well the hard way. So at this stage, you're probably feeling pretty, pretty good having taken out one Jedi and you've got quite a, few, a couple of ships in an early, early position to get in quite quickly. What, yeah. what would you say is your, what would you say is your main aim now? What would you be trying to look at doing? Um, looking at it at the minute, I would say maybe focus fire down the green etta to the Jedi General. Has only got two hull left. However, because we recorded this a week or two ago, I can't remember if that is actually what I did. <laughs> um, so I think I'd definitely keep Grievous and the two Vulture Droids in front of him in a yeah. little group, in like a little mini swarm. Um, I think with the Red Vulture Droid, I I think I did something like a one forward just to get him on that asteroid and the red, uh, sorry, the green and the yellow. I think I just, they're a bit far out. I think I tried to move them a bit more into the game. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we can see that I'm using the inbuilt ship ability there to spend the force as intuitive controls during the system phase. You may perform a purple barrel roll or boost action. So it looks like I'm lining up for something interesting there. Um, I know right now I'm thinking I want to get those guns not being pointing at me while still getting guns at you. Um, so again, I think I remember what I did and I think I know what I'd be planning to do um, as to whether that is actually what I did at the time. Obviously it's great looking back at a game to have a look. Um, but it looks like you missed landing on that obstacle with red again, but still in a fairly good position to try and come in and cause some hurt. Yeah. And of course, because the grappling struts, I don't actually have to look at doing damage. Uh, well, I can't remember without um, <laughs> rolling a dice for a damage um, because they literally just skip over them, they ignore. They ignore obstacles, which is quite nice, unless it's a gas cloud, and then understandably, yeah, yeah they would take um, issues with that. But debris or asteroids, vultures literally just laugh them off. And I think if I'd have realised that, I'd have taken more gas clouds. Um, <laughs> we have one. This is set up very much in the favour of vultures, with having multiple asteroids and some debris and one gas cloud. They kind of love this. I mean, I'd love to see them try and park themselves on a gas cloud. There's not really anything for them to grip onto there. No. But it's looking like you are... You're sensing the blood in the water there. You're definitely coming in again, aggressively. Um, and I'm just thinking, God, you've got those energy shells and I don't like them because they are crazily good. So, if I remember rightly, I think I was trying to see if I could do something crazy and try and get behind Blue and Brown and possibly behind Grievous as well, not knowing what they were going to do, hoping that they might try and come and go for a block. So yeah, it looks like you're coming in for a potential block if I turn into the board. Which I'm not going to lie, if I turn up the board right now, then that's definitely Bump City. 
and yeah. are not a happy place to be. I suppose a good thing with having the Jedi though is if you bump and fail your action, you have still got the Force to back you up. Yeah, I mean, the Force is like a slightly better calculate, I would say. Yeah. Um, obviously, it can only change one result, just like a calculate, but it recharges, which is quite nice, and I do like that with this list. Oh, and there's a 4K turn. That Ouch. is... That's nice. That's a really good position to end up in. So, I th add another. <laughs> I'm going to assume they're all doing 4K turns at this point, so that takes brown and blue out of the equation for this round in the shooting. I think yellow might might have arc on green. It's really hard to say. But again, yeah. avoiding Grievous, I'm liking this. So it looks like you're just going to get those tokens up and hope to weather whatever's coming at you. Yeah. Is this actually, the weather I can actually make the most of this now? Yeah, I wasn't expecting you to do 4Ks. I was thinking, oh, you might do a slower manoeuvre just to, you know, still get some shots in at range one. That's why I was thinking, right, if I try and come in and block you, um, or at least get closer to range one, I wasn't mm. expecting you to do 4Ks. Yeah. I think especially quite early on into the game, it's not what not something you'd expect. I think in hindsight, that's a good move, but I think I might have done something slightly different earlier on. I think I was a bit foolish in going headlong towards you there. I think I should have played it a bit more tactical. But I do have a nice range one there on blue. Again, shame there's no bullseye, because that would have been a great four dice shot, but it's still a three dice shot at range one. And that is the damaged Separatist drone at this point. Yeah, that's poor Blue. <laughs> and looks like he's not going to take that much damage there. My dice are not playing very well. Those digital dice gods. Yeah. Debating, yep, spending the force to get two hits to see if we can push something through. And that's Ooh. one damage. Which isn't terrible. I mean, look at it, obviously Ayla's got no shot regardless, and I'm not even sure if Green would have a shot on Brown, so... Oh, it would have clipped Brown, but it's a range one on Blue, so I think focus there is to try and see if I can get rid of Blue. <laughs> and with a dice roll like that, that's a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting that I didn't spend the force there to force that through, but didn't need it, so <laughs> that's good. That takes out one drone. Brings the points a little bit closer. I mean, they're not as expensive as a an ether two, unfortunately. But I suppose that's the thing with drones, they are a lot more expendable. They uh they're built to be like that. Yeah. So let's see what you've got. So you've got ooh, ooh, just sneaking in a range two there on blue. Who That's so close? Yeah. Who, despite what the overlay says, does not have any force at the moment. Now, whilst we were playing this, I was doing the overlay at the same time. So trying to keep on top of all of the shifting values can be quite tricky. So you, you may notice that the force values aren't always accurate the whole way through the game, but we are keeping track of them. That's a role I'm okay with. Um, we are keeping track of them actually on the table. And... That ended up as an evade there, which was good because it was looking like it was going very badly there. And Red did manage to sneak in a range three shot. So close. And energy shell charges, can they be fired at range three? Uh... I think I think we actually just saw, yes, they can, you're rolling three dice, so yeah, range three. Yeah. 
Yeah. God, they really are good, aren't they? And finally, my very dice are coming home a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, spend a charge, and while I perform this attack, you may spend one calculate to change one focus into a crit action to reload, and that is within ranges two to three. So I think the idea with those then is to get in close to avoid that um, ability of spending the charge to turn that into a crit. So if obviously that, that's a really good upgrade actually to have. It's it reminds me very much of the uh, synced laser cannons on the Thai Brute. Um, although it's only obviously got the one charge on it, it gives you a three dice shot at all ranges, which is something I like with the sync, sync laser cannons on the type route. It means that range two to three, you use that for your three dice shot. And when you get in range one, you use the... So that wasn't that was a that was a pretty good turn there. I managed to get one of the drones off and didn't suffer any damage this turn. So I'm definitely okay with that part of it. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a it's an interesting position that I'm now in um, with the Jedi, at least comparable to Grievous and the Vulture Droid. Obviously, I know that Vulture Droid can do something crazy and basically turn around straight back at me quite quickly, as we said, with that 1k turn. Um, but I do have the advantage of having R4 Astromech, which means I do have a one hard turn, which is blue, which is just absolutely crazy. So yeah. I, <laughs> I, I think I'm still going to be suffering quite a bit of pain coming from yellow, red, and green coming in. Fortunately, yellow and red have already spent their charges. So I don't think you're going to probably want to spend a turn when you've got me in front of you, like, recharging those guns just yet. Yeah, especially when you're quite, quite close. Hmm. If I remember right, I don't think I actually wanted to recharge the energy shell charges however very if i did i've still got those calculates from last turn that got sacred yeah. kraken from grievous yeah absolutely like i'm not gonna lie as a person that doesn't play separatists very much i don't like kraken it's a bit annoying it's very cheesy <laughs> but it, it works so well it it, it like i said it's really in flavor with the separatists so i mean right now I think that was a that was a fairly good term for me, but I'm still a bit. Even watching this back, I feel a little bit on the back foot. Not entirely sure what I need to be doing right now, other than killing drones, but also trying to keep my forces alive as much as possible. It's, this is such a difficult position to be in right now. Yeah. You can sort of imagine Grievous as well, sitting sat in the cockpit going, die, Jedi slime. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm even, even now I'm trying to think back to what I did and I can't actually work out in my head what I, what I would have or should have done. Hmm. I can imagine it's probably some form of one hard in to try and face into those drones yeah i'm struggling I mean, to remember mine <laughs> yeah i mean frustratingly and this doesn't normally sound frustrating but where i've got the initiative grievous is still going to be there so even if i do the one hard in that would definitely be more than likely a bump from green blue and blue and Blue would make it, Ayla would make it, but I'd probably be bumpy with green, meaning no action, because I think right now I want to be getting rid of that whole breach. Yeah, but definitely. If, but if I just try and zip forward, 
you're going to be behind me and it's just going to be hot, like horrendous. It's uh, really not a nice position to be in right now. Yeah, and you've got a yeah. good kill. You've got a really good kill box coming here. Yeah, um, I mean, even though I have just bumped with yellow and green, I have still got those calculates, of course, from crack and the round before. Yeah. So even though I've kind of mocked up a little bit there, I'm still, as you said, in a little bit of a good position with a kill box. Um, yeah. And you've got the two calculates on red as well. You've now got a calculate on brown. So there's your network calculation calculates as well. So you've still got essentially five calculates that you could use on those three ships. Yeah. So you, you're in a... I'd say you're in a very strong position there with a good kill box. So there's the one hard going in. Ooh. So we can see from where that lands that if Green does a one hard, which I'm assuming he has, that's going to be a bump. So there'll be no actions there. So just taking taking the focus. Because there's no reposition. Yeah. We're well, still going to be very square on though, which is quite good. Luckily, uh, Green does have full force at the moment, so, and I mean, he's only got two shots coming at him, depending on what Grievous does. Um, and it looks like a, you could potentially have three shots on Blue, so you could be you could be changing your uh, target to try and take out Blue. Yeah. I like that, Grievous. It's just like, you know what? I'm just here to provide calculate support. I'm not here to actually do anything. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like you were trying to do a sloop as well, so that's stressful. So I really like that. Yeah, I was hoping that it would fit. Um, mm. However, with it, well, for me personally, it doesn't matter whether it's physically in front of you or whether it's on tabletop simulator. I'm not very good or very spatially aware. <laughs> so I think I was maybe been a bit optimistic thinking that it would be able to do the three sloop um but to be honest i think it's a lot of heart like it can be quite difficult to be spatially aware in general but i think as well for on tts it, it's even harder to gauge it because although you can move the camera around to get all these fancy angles it doesn't quite be getting down to the level of the table and looking at it with your eye i think yeah. although I, I do i really enjoy tts don't get me wrong it's fantastic it's been brilliant for allowing us to continue playing during this time of lockdown and obviously testing out different ships i mean i don't own four etta twos <laughs> because well <laughs> they're out of stock again um but it does have its limitations. Yeah. But it looks like we are going to have some shots coming. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I might be able to actually get rid of some of those droids before they get a chance to shoot me. And Ayla does have yellow in bullseye, so that means she does have access to all three dice. With <laughs> with two force and a focus, you'd like to think that this is going to be quite good. But we shall see. Yeah. Yeah, not very good. Not Not particularly good, so... Spending the focus there, I think in hindsight it probably would have been better to spend the force, but two hits on and yellow. it still goes through. <laughs> yeah, two hits on yellow, that's still pretty good. I think that's one of the things with the droids. Like, I know that obviously three health is like the minimum you'll ever find on a ship, but with the Eta 2s, you, you can't always guarantee that you're going to be able to get a three dice shot so you tend to have to then spend an extra shot have to try and take them out although this is nice a range one in the bullseye four dice shot with a focus and one force 
this is a position I like to be in. That's a position I like to be in. Oh. <laughs> so that's a guaranteed kill. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly having traumatic flashbacks <laughs> to these dice rolls. Yeah. And I think I'm just, I think I'm debating whether I trigger Dead Eye Shot. I oh, know um, the Jedi General doesn't have Dead Eye Shot, but it wouldn't have, ba- wouldn't have been required anyway. So, it's another drone down, which again, I'm happy about, but that's two ships down for you, and only just have I sort of snuck ahead of you in the points. So, again, those those vultures are just so cheap. Yeah. Points are so close as well. Yeah. I mean, you, you took a good strong early lead with taking Shaq T off the board. Um, and th- oh, this is lined up really well as well. Another bullseye shot there. It's not often you get that, and it's quite nice when it does pull off. So it'll be interesting to see how this one goes with red. And spending a force there because no focus because he bumped into Grievous. So hit crit. But you have access to what is it, a million calculates by the look of it? Yep. <laughs> so he's laughing that off. And I believe, fortunately for me though, he does not have. Um, he's already shot his energy shell charge so oh I think I yeah I took the crit here I completely forgot to yeah use networked calculations I did but, not pick that up <laughs> and it looks like that actually went on to green so it looks like I shot at green instead and that's a weapons failure on green Now, obviously, this is fairly casual, but also still tournament. We're still doing this as a bit of a tournament, so um, there is a little bit of give and take in there. Obviously, there are points where we might actually point something out to an opponent, or we might have a bit of decision about how we're going to call that. Um, We're essentially being our own TO and judges at the same time. Um, We're trying to be as fair as possible. Ooh, two hits. Ooh, that's good, even with the weapons failure there. And having to spend that last force to not die, because knowing your luck with the crits that come out, because with Hull Bridge that would have been a crit, I'd have probably died. Yeah. <laughs> it was a Hull Breach, Fuel Leak, and Direct Hit of the top three that I dread seeing. Yeah, I think they're quite common. I think weapons failure comes in there as well. I don't. It's a bit of a frustrating one because I always find that you get that before you've had a chance to shoot. So, um, but looks like we have another. Oh, so this is the energy shell charges from green this time. I think, or they've. Oh no, I think green shot his energy shell charges. This is now red, and you're just flipping the token. Yeah. And again, another another great shot. Those red dice really, really in your favour. Fortunately, the green <laughs> dice are actually coming back a little bit for me. Oh, gosh. I, I always dread it. Every time you pull red dice out, I just dread how much damage it's going to cause to someone because they're just the red dice seem to be very good for you. Have you put any special coding in there for that at all? Or is it just luck? <laughs> just pure luck, I think. Okay. They either go really, really well or really, really not well, as you saw in the um, yeah. rolling five yeah. dice at range one, all blanks. <laughs> yeah, we have seen that. And it is quite frustrating. Um, but 
this is now, it's definitely, the game has got a different edge to it now than we had a moment ago. I think this is, mm. I'm quite happy with this current positioning. I think it definitely works in my favour a little bit more. I've got a bit more space to play with. Again, those drones, they're in a, they're in a good position. I almost anticipate at least one K turn and probably some very slow manoeuvres from red and green. Grievous has got to now try and get rid of his stress, but I think this is this is still it's still it's still an interesting place to be sat in at the moment. I mean what, what no, would I'm you I'm trying to remember what I did. Yeah. I mean let's flip it on its head. What would you anticipate that I would be doing right now? Uh, I'd say some form of slow manoeuvre inwards, but then again, you're not stressed, so could potentially see some more K turns again, just to try and get behind the red and green. Yeah. I mean, it's always the weather, because that gas cloud, I think, I think blue would be fine where that gas cloud is for the K-turn, but I think I'd be wary of that because of where red and green are, they could be quite problematic with that. Again, you could probably go quite slow with red and green and be safe in the knowledge that you're probably going to line up some form of shot, which would be quite scary. And I think Grievous, obviously, is just going to need to spend a bit of time getting himself turned back around. He's, uh... I mean, he's got a fairly good dial, right? Grievous, he could just... What's it... What are his blues like? <laughs> his blues are basically two bank, two forward, and three forward. Um, oh, so not a so lot of blues, then. So he's only got four there. blue manoeuvres. No, um... It's really not a lot. <laughs> it, it, that actually surprised me a little bit because you'd expect, for how nippy and manoeuvrable you see him going around the board, you expect him to have more blues. But I, mean, I can imagine you're probably doing a two bank to the left to try and clear that stress and not go over that rock because he doesn't have grappling struts and he doesn't like rocks. So. No. <laughs> um, but it looks like there's a force charge being spent on all three ships. And what was he a booster or a barrel roll? So barrel rolling back barrel up. Roll. Oh. Barrel rolling back up the board, give it a bit more space. See when I first first saw the ability for the ship and it was the ability to do the barrel roll or boost in the system phase, mm -hmm. it was one of those ones where I was a little bit like I don't know if I like it in the system phase, whereas like the Delta Seven and um, some of the other faster ships, they can basically tie it onto their moves. They can get that boost barrel roll later. But I've, I've come to I've come to quite appreciate that system phase barrel roll, especially if you've got an interesting shot potentially through an obstacle. You can use it for protection, and then you can barrel roll away from it next turn. So. Oh, and we've got a talent roll from Red. I think you were assuming that K turn there, in fact. Yeah. I mean, the K turn is still a possibility. Let's see where Green goes. And looks like you're also doing. Oh, another talent roll. So you are definitely very much going for anticipating a K-turn from me there. Which I don't blame you. I, th I think a K-turn, prior to seeing what you did, a K-turn would have been quite nice. I think Green as well might have cleared, might clear a K-turn. And that'd be a great interesting little green on green face off there. Finally got yourself on a rock with Brown. Yep. I was trying to remember whether I was going to do a 1k or whether I was going to sit on the rock and yeah, yeah I'm remembering it right now definitely did sit on the rock yeah I, I think
think a vulture droid or a hyena on a rock is one of my least favorite things just because you've essentially just turned yourself into an artillery battery there. Yes. <laughs> um, but let's see. Oh, so it's the one hard back down the board. Nice. So that takes red and green essentially out of the fight for this turn. I like that. I wasn't thinking you would do that. I really was thinking you were going to do the 4K. Yeah. And fixing hole breach there. Definitely worth fixing that at this point. Now, let's see what Grievous was doing. Probably getting out of there, to be honest. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're clearing that stress. Anticipate a boost round, maybe, to try and set yourself up to get round for next turn. Yeah, and get myself out of Arkham range as well, if possible. Yeah. It's an interesting one, though. Obviously, Grievous is worth quite a lot of points. I mean, Kraken in itself, as we said, 11 points. So as to whether it's worth going straight in for it, but he's, he's such a He's quite a tough one to crack. But that takes it out of the equation. He's um, he's well out of there anyway, so that's fine. And now just for Ayla Secure to follow up with the rest of them. She's been a little bit lost and out of the game though. She hasn't, she's had that one, one good shot early on, but she's not really done as much as I, I would have hoped. I almost think that I would have probably preferred to have uh, potentially lost her as opposed to Shakti. Um, but we've got a range three shot through an obstacle at Brown. So more of a dice that you can shake a stick out there. So 2v4. Most of the dice a droid will ever get. Yeah. And that was nothing. So, the most of a dice a droid will ever get, and he didn't even need it. <laughs> and range two from blue. I'm not sure if you can tell, I think I really wanted to get rid of that droid. And it isn't going particularly well, to be honest. Although you are having to spend the calculates. I think you're just trying to debate which calculates to spend there, whether to spend your own or spend reds. Not that I think it really makes much difference. Mm -hmm. You're not going to save those calculates for later. So choices. 2v2, yep, going 2v2 on red there. Ooh, that was a good see. roll. Oh, was that just you putting your dice out? Oh. I was just putting my dice down. I've got a crit in there though, so I'll take that. Yeah. And you got your evade. And I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame you. I mean, that was, from my perspective, that was quite disappointing. I had a really good initial opportunity there to get some get some solid damage in with no return fire coming back at me, and it didn't work, which is a bit of a shame. And I think it's one of the downsides of the ETA 2 that it is just a two-dice gun if it's not in the bullseye. Um, I think they definitely require a little bit more expertise in their flying that I haven't quite managed to pull off so far in this game. I mean, there's been a couple of good maneuvers, but nothing I would say that is uh, particularly great at the moment, unfortunately, if I'm being brutally honest with myself. Yeah. I think maybe they're a ship that could definitely benefit from taking some form of obviously they have access to the cannon um but again to for damage output the best cannon they've got for that is the heavy laser cannon which again is bullseye 
or potentially you've got the auto blasters as well if you're in range one. And again, it gets the benefit of Bullseye of having an additional dice. So it's a tough little ship. I mean, it's fast, it's nimble, it looks cool. And it's got some cool abilities, but I, th I think it still still needs a bit more play to quite work out exactly yeah. how I want to be flying it. But right now you're in a you're in a fairly good position um, with Brown at least. Obviously, it's going to take a little bit to turn around red and green, but it shouldn't be too tricky to get the tip. Like green could just do the one hard and. He's coming back down on them. So. Yeah, Grievous, I could see doing, I think if I remember right, I went hard left just to get back around. Yeah. The gas cloud or a two, bar a two blue bank, I think. Is he, he's got barrel roll, hasn't he? He has, yeah, and it links into a stressed focus. Yeah. Almost looks like it would be worth doing a sort of a two bank potential barrel roll and not focus so you're not stressed, and then you can do a hard turn the following round to get back in. Now, there is something I have remembered mm. about this game and about this next phase of play, in fact which leads in quite nicely to a pro tip for when playing TTS and something that I I didn't quite realise at the time. Obviously, when you're playing in real life and you've got your dial, it's sometimes difficult to know, right, which, which direction is your ship going to go in? And you can spin your yes. dial around so it's facing in the same direction as your ship. It's not as easy to do that on TTS. Uh, so pro tip for anyone that is playing, make sure you know which way the maneuver is going with your ship, as you will see in a few moments. So we've got Red going over the gas cloud getting himself a strain. Gas Cloud's the only obstacle, as we've said, that the Vulture Droids don't like. And let's see what Green decided to do, or if we're going to in brown round first because I can imagine brown's just going to do a 90 degree turn yeah I think it would make sense too especially with the uh, three Jedi uh, potentially going towards him but what, what were you thinking were you thinking turning in towards the board or yeah so very much with what I've done there I was I was hoping to get some nice turn-ins at brown whilst obviously red and green were otherwise focused and hopefully get some good shots in try and take brown off that asteroid and then swing around and see what i could do with some of the other vultures so let's see i mean i'm assuming brown brown's going to turn up the board yeah I think at this point we were debating because I haven't actually flown separatists on DPS yet. No idea how to actually spin it around. Yeah. Um, you've got to unlock the ship and then rotate it. But you've also got to be careful as to how you've got your rotate set because you can set it 15 degrees, 45 and 90 degrees. Um, I've got mine set as 90, so I was able to just uh, click one turn to the left and it did it for you so but then making sure you relock that ship so you don't accidentally delete it and as i was saying it was at this point i realized i'd made a mistake in that all of my ships were supposed to be doing a two bank to ship left 
not a two bank to ship right. Now, yeah. <laughs> now for green and blue, that's not a problem. Who might that be a problem for? Do you remember, Amy? <laughs> I think it was a problem for that one. <laughs> yeah. So, again, my intention was to come in up the board and get some really nice shots on brown. And as I said, pro tip, always check which way your dials are set. Yeah. Now... I mean, if it was like a... A friendly friendly match I would have said oh it's alright just switch your dial you obviously made that mistake and go back into yeah. you know the, dial it to the way that you wanted it but because this is a bit of a tournament whether or not to do that yeah I mean we did have a chat with some of the other guys in the tournament and we ended up going with um, rolling for it to see what would happen and as has been quite common for this game the dice were not in my favour so I ended up sticking with the move which is fair I mean it's it was a complete mistake on my part and I will say you should always be really careful um, when setting the dials even in real life and if I hadn't have done that system system phase barrel roll it might even have been okay but I decided to put myself closer to the edge of the board um, just to ensure that I compounded my mistake. So, yeah. There we go. F's for Ayla Secura. And 57 <laughs> points for Amy. <laughs> so, That's yeah. Point. I, oh. <laughs> I mean, I was quite disappointed with myself. Um, but it does now make it a very interesting game. <laughs> yeah, it was a very fun game. I mean, we've all done it though. Yeah. Um, with flying ships off the board. In I remember in version one, I, this is when I was still playing Scum at this point. I had a fully loaded Boba Fett in fire spray, and it taken no damage whatsoever. And of course, I took him off the board in phase two or three. <laughs> um, and even then, that's still quite a chunky ship and a lot of points. So. It was my own mistake, but I pretty much, because he was so expensive points-wise, of course, that was the game already lost for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I... But then again, like I say, for, the, for this game, you could quite easily claw it back, especially with two Jedis. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've seen it so many times. I think the, the most memorable one for myself is I saw someone fly a Decimator off the board. Um, again, in a tournament setting, he powered all the way down the side of the board. He had the engine upgrade on there and decided he was going to boost. And I was just looking at that going, I know what your dial is like. And I know that nothing on your dial is going to keep you on the board. Um, and again, if it wasn't a tournament, yeah. I'd, have probably, I'd have probably said to him, did you want to not do that? But when it's a tournament, obviously... Sometimes, depending on how fair you want to be, you, you do keep a bit stum. And as I said, in that game, the Decimator was the one that I was yeah. really scared of. So for him to sort that out for me, I was like, you know what? Crack on. Good work. Um, but yeah, this this definitely does make it a bit more... <laughs> sometimes it fun. works in your favour, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. And at this point, it's definitely worked very much in your favour there. It's uh, very much helped you out. Um, so we'll just have to see if this can be clawed back or if those darn separatists make the most of it and absolutely destroy me and cracking coming into play there oh, so frustrating so good yeah I think if I flew Separatist more, I'd probably use Kraken fairly often. It is a must-have to have on on, on um, Grievous. Oh, well, any of the Bellabobs, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's I've just seen... a shame that you can't get the Bellabob yet as a single ship. Yeah, I mean, that does, that does surprise me. I think there's... What, two ships in the game at the moment that you can't get single versions of which is the 
Balabarb and the V19 Torrent you can't get single versions of. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people probably don't need to buy single versions of the V19 as they've probably got one or two or maybe even three copies of the Republic Squadron set. I know I've purchased two myself. But it might be something we see later on down the line with AMG um, taking over the reins. We've got the new squadron packs coming, um, well, later this month, in fact. So by the time this game comes up, those, those packs will be out in less than two weeks, which I am very excited for. It's been quite a while since I've bought any new plastic yeah. for my fleet. And I have the Phoenix Cell and Skystrike Squadron packs on pre-order. Can't wait to go pick those up. No, but I can't. I mean, um, the um, my fiance has gone and pre-ordered me um, the Servants of Strife, and we're very, very lucky that the release date is the day before our, our anniversary. So <laughs> that's pretty much my anniversary present sorted out. Um, I cannot wait to get that um, get opened and just to have a look at those ships. I can't remember the last time I actually bought a ship. <laughs> long yeah. ago. Yeah, I, I think I got some, I got a few ships at Christmas. I got some separatist ships and was waiting to buy more separatist ships when they came in stock. And then they went, you sure you want separatists? We're releasing this. And then I was kind of like, okay, separatists can wait for a bit. I'm going to add to my already quite large empire and rebel fleets. I mean, I don't need more interceptors or more defenders or more B-wings or more A-wings. I've got plenty. But now I'll have more than enough to cover two people's games, three people's games. <laughs> Ooh, that's quite an interesting... I suppose it might work out with... Ooh, yes. So, we have a bullseye with green, but uh, luckily, I think it's too close for energy shells from brown there, because it's range one, so no turning your focuses into crits on me, which I really don't like. Oh, and will we actually see Grievous actually getting into the fight a little bit there? Taking his time, but we might actually see some action from yeah, Grievous. So perfect. That is an unobstructed shot onto that droid there, despite him being on the rock. Two hits. I think you've assumed it's, it is uh, obstructed. And then, of course, I remembered, oh, yeah, grappling struts, it's not obstructed. <laughs> yeah. So, one of eight, so one hit. So, still one hit, but now we do have a range one bullseye shot. So, can we finally take out that pesky droid that has been causing me issues all game? because I think he's my least favourite droid at the moment. So, oh, what have we got here? Uh, just, seems a little bit important to the game, just wait to see. Oh, I think we realised that obviously you rolled too, you rolled too many dice previously. Um, so you're re-rolling that. And it was the same outcome. Although it looks like you did miss the calculate, but you might have been trying to save that for a shot instead. 
And now we I think have... that's what I was aiming to do, especially with you so close. Yeah. And now we have the range one from green, four dice with two force. Not needing the force, not needing the focus, yeah. three hits. So I like that. Could be enough, but you do have, again, three of eight dice. So let's see. Pesky droid. <laughs> Laughing it off. Don't like him. Libs! <laughs> One health left. Again, this is where the droids get pesky. It's so different. Like, they're not. You think they're easy to take out when you've got big guns. I suppose that was a big gunshot, but it just didn't work out very well for me. But here we go. Let's see what Grievous can finally yeah. do when he gets into the action. I think this is Grievous's first shot of the game, actually. So he was yeah, just it outside of it was just outside of range three earlier. And he comes in and does that because he's <laughs> Grievous. Jedi slime. Oh, luckily, I have the focus to evade all of that. Whew. That's nerve wracking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's even more nerve wracking is the position of Green at the moment. I'm hoping he doesn't have to spend all of his force because otherwise he's going over a rock in a minute. Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, no, that's to be honest, I'm being silly. Even if he did spend all of his force, he regains one in the end phase anyway. Ignore me. Completely forgetting how the game works. So, green on green. Two hits. And having to spend the force. Debating whether it's one or two. You spend both, wow. Yeah, to be honest, he's got two health, and uh, it's better to see what my dice will actually just pull out. And annoyingly, because you're on the rock, it doesn't count as obstructed when you're shooting at me. No. I don't like that. <laughs> I like, it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah, it's, it's a great, it's a great mechanic for you. I like that. I do like that. Only uh, one hit. That's that's. I'm okay with that. Yeah, that I'm not okay with. <laughs> yeah. Because at the moment, Green is in a really scary position. So if he if he'd have suffered one damage, that would have been half points on Green. That would have, with nine minutes left, that would have put me into a really tight predicament there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as it is, I think this is... This is a scary... Like, this is quite a scary position for me to be in because, again, Brown can just turn around and Green can K-turn and just be like, yeah, whatever. Grievous is probably going to do a hard maneuver to try and create a box. Yeah, this is this is where it's getting really nerve wracking, and I know that I need to take out two droids to have a chance. Let's actually have a look. Yeah, because if I take out if I only take out Green, who's not half pointed yet, it wouldn't be enough. I need, I need to take out both green and brown to keep myself in this game, really. Mm. So what are you thinking now with your two ships, like green and brown? What are you, th what are you thinking is going to be the best for them? Uh, I'm thinking brown to just rotate. I'm thinking yep. green... If I can sort of do a blue maneuver to get rid of that stress, but also try and get them on the rock. So I've got two turrets essentially on that asteroid. Um, yeah. 
Grievous, I can see doing a two bank um, to get rid of the stress and also to get a little bit closer to the other twos. The yeah. reds, I can't remember what I do, but I can land on debris, I believe. So I think it would make sense for me to sort of go on to the debris and then just turn, anticipating the um, other twos to come down the board a bit more. Yeah. And then I'm there ready. But again, I don't know. Yeah. It's what you're thinking with the, the two Jedis. Well, there's one thing I definitely know that I need to do, and that is to barrel roll green. And it's all to, it all comes down to whether I barrel roll outside, just barrel roll green up. Yeah. So now going either side of that, I think leaving blue where he is, he was in a, he was in a comfortable position, does mean I've now got no force left on green. So it's going to be tricky for him. Uh, looks like Red was going over the debris to come back in. But again, as you said, he's a droid. He doesn't care. Yeah. He loves it. <laughs> doesn't need to mess about with rolling for that crit or getting a stress token. I love it. I mean, I wish, I kind of wish that there was some some things in like some of the other factions that could allow you to do that. I know that the scum has the mining guild tie, but they're the few that really are cool with going over and landing on it. I think maybe Dash Rendar is okay with it. And obviously there are some upgrades you can stick on like collision detector, which is a, a great little upgrade. I love that on Phantoms. Allowing you, allowing you to uh, decloak over an obstacle. We're just laughing about it. Still need to fly my phantom. Again, I still can't believe you haven't flown your phantoms. <laughs> I've only got the one. Oh gosh, I still need to make up a list for it. I mean, I've never flown one, it. One is all you need. It's great in a little mini aces list. Like you can have a phantom. Um, you could go Phantom Defender and probably stick in there as well an Interceptor or a TIE Advanced V1 and you'd, you'd have a great little mm -hmm. list there. I mean the Phantoms are brilliant. You, you've got Whisper who is just probably top, is in my top three pilots. Um, you've got Echo who can do the two uh, bank Decloak barrel roll instead. I uh, hope so you can get into some crazy positions with that. Very, very reminiscent of the Star Vipers with their um, one bank barrel roll. So it's quite cool. But you need to get your phantoms on the board or your phantom even because it's, yeah. <laughs> it's such a it's such a cool looking ship. And you yeah. don't they don't see a lot of play anymore either. Not since the early meta of the quad phantoms with Duke. That is a great 4K turn. That was good. And there's a, that's, <laughs> that is really good. So it looks like See, at I the wasn't moment, expecting you to do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it, it looks great. That looks really thematic, them doing K turns over the, like, Get to the side of the rock, K turn round, it looks really cool. And um, again, I don't I don't think Grievous can get himself into a position to get a shot. No, I think at this point I was debating whether or not to boost or whether to barrel roll to try and get out of range. I think from my perspective at this late stage of the game, I don't think I'd be looking at going at Grievous. He's got too much help. Although you, you put him there. Oh, it's such a tight one. Um, but he's got so much health to chew through to get half points on him. I'd have to get four, four damage on him to get half points. And he's not easy to get four damage on, so I don't think I'd be looking at doing that. A range one on brown, though. Okay is something I would definitely be looking at if I can finally get rid of him because that is unobstructed because the rock is all on your left. 
Yes. And that is just typical of my rolling. Not quite enough to do it. And then you roll that. Oh, so. Yeah. And I've got I've got to. To stay alive, I've got to. Yeah. I mean, if I'd have managed one more hit there. But again, I think if I'm sensible, I'm going range one into brown as well, because I think I need to take him out. Yeah, there we go. Range one yeah. into brown. It needs to be done. I... Uh, no force to spend. So another hit crit. Here we go. You get two evades again? Goes through. Oh, no, crit. it goes through. The crit goes through. How many shots has brown actually taken this game? He has weathered everything. Uh, and at the end of that, he got a direct hit. <laughs> I mean, I think your damage deck was just rubbing salt in there. I mean, did you need to have a direct hit at the end there? <laughs> just, just to make sure he's extra dead. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be honest, with the amount of dam with the amount of shots he actually had coming in at him, it's not surprising. Ooh. Oh, that's Ooh. close. I remember Ooh. why I barreled inwards. <laughs> yeah, only just range two there. Wow, that is close. That was close. And this, at this point, makes me think, oh no. Ooh, two hits. Luckily, I've got force with, with that. Yeah, I've got force with blue, so ooh, fingers crossed, but you could half point him here. Oh, that's okay. I can live with that. Blue can definitely <laughs> live with that. Definitely no shots from that one. No. And it looks like... No shots again. And I think we managed to get one more round in. Yeah. I think we just started setting our dial, so we have one more round coming in just as the timer ticks over. Yeah. Still, a lot of work needed to be done. You've got quite a commanding lead. Yeah. I mean, I need to take out a, take out one of those droids to, even if I take out one of those droids, I only just sneak ahead there. And again, Green is on a knife edge. He's on a knife edge to go into half points. Yeah. And you've got you've got red in such a good position to come come swooping in. Grievous is in an interesting one. That rock is not in a really nice place for him. No, I don't think I thought that bit through. <laughs> I think I was just thinking we're getting close towards the end of the game. Our best barrel roll and just risk it just to try and make sure that I could get some hits in. Yeah. And just live with the, the damage if I get it. So what would you add what would you do with so what would you do with red? Red, I think I would try and get some form of fast banking um, just to try and get the turn and to get him a little bit more into play. Green, I think, I can't remember if I get off the rock or not. I don't think I do, I think I just spin round. Grievous, I, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got a clue at all. So I think for myself, I'm looking at it thinking, I, I want to take out green. <laughs> um, I want to avoid Grievous because Again, this is too much too much there to try and actually cause some damage on it. So if I can hit green, not know what is happening with red is really tricky. So there we go. There's a purple barrel roll. So opening things up a bit there. Oh, 
Oh, just going straight with red. Uh, I think I think maybe you're anticipating green and blue going quite fast. Yeah. At this point, I don't think I could remember what blue maneuvers you had. So I thought you were going to be trying to do some form of fast, straight, or bank, yeah. just to get rid of the stress. Um. I mean, to be honest, you've got a really nice barrel roll there, which would mm. cover quite a lot of space there. I think you really, I think green is a tough one to really call as to whether... Because you don't have to rotate, do you? Uh, I think you do. Let me just double check. I know you have to do a 2-4 to get completely off the rock. Yeah. Uh, let me just check grappling struts. I think every time I, every time anyone plays with grappling struts, I, I think I'm always asking you how they work because again, I've never used them. Um, yeah, you have to. I think you have to because basically, to get off the rock, you have to do a two forward. Yeah. Um, but you can't not set your dial. Yeah. And there isn't a is a 90 degree turn so you have to choose which way to spin it okay i suppose that's quite good yeah so you are guaranteed something so it basically doesn't matter what you dial in you, you know automatically what you're going to do oh yeah Ooh. did that and that didn't clip either which was good for me Yes, I remember looking at it when we were playing, and that was really, really close as well. <laughs> yeah. Pixels in it. We've seen over the past couple of weeks and months with the games we've had on TTS, I've seen some incredibly close things happening on there with avoiding obstacles, fitting in between other ships, catching people just at range one. It's been quite crazy. Um, yeah, I think that was the only move Grievous could do, unfortunately, for Grievous. Yeah. So let's have a quick look. So, obviously, Green and Grievous have no shot. Um, red looks like he may have a shot in on blue. So it'll be interesting in what order I decide to take my shots. To be honest, I think it's going to be green into red and blue into green. Yeah, it makes sense. But at this point, it's a full Hail Mary. Fingers crossed. Blow on the dice and hope. So range one. With one force and a focus. <laughs> All those red dice. I think I roll... I think I'm rolling too many red dice there. Not that it matters because two of, one of them was blank. So that's two hits on red. And that puts it at half points. Puts it at half points. But again, he's got like, he's like hardly any points. <laughs> Still so close, points-wise. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Like, you've taken, like, a big leap in points and got quite ahead, and I've been having to really claw myself back, and I get sort of within touching distance, and then I fly a ship off the board, and I have to do it all over again. So... At this stage, I need to take out... I think I need to take out green to actually... That is absolutely... That's exactly what you want. Oh, my days. Oh. And that's it. That's green done. Wow. Oh, wow. Bye, green. You did well. 
to be honest, those vultures, I think they did absolutely fantastic throughout this game. Yeah. Let's see. So let's just check if Red has a shot. And just posterity, what was that crit? Uh, looks like a hole breach. So those crits you said you didn't like, you got when it didn't really matter. Yeah, I was I was quite happy at that, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and look at that. We were saying just about down. we were saying about millimeters in it. Just out there. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, that was a uh, from my perspective, that was a tough game. From my perspective. Um your ships were just they put the hurt in early and you flew you flew them very well. I think it was uh I think it was a bit unfortunate for you though. I think that if you'd got the window, I don't think anyone would have said anything about it. I think you flew very well there, by the way, Amy. Yeah, thank you. So, so your two Jedi did as well, considering um Shakti got taken off so early. Um Yeah. And Aelis Cure fleed from battle. <laughs> um still did really, really well to claw them points back and steal the win. It was it was played really, really well. Yeah. It was a, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And uh I think definite definite good point there was to ignore Grievous because he was going to be too difficult to try and chew through. Um, but that was a great game three. So again, Amy, thank you very much for joining us on that. So let's just have a quick look and see the results so far. So three games in, and we've got a good win for Amy, a solid win for James, and a sneaky win for myself there. And that leaves the table like this. Amy's still commanding the top of the board there. <laughs> and with James, myself, Fergus, then Quinn. But I said we've got plenty more games to come in. So we'll see how this evolves as we go through. Um, but Amy, just want to say thank you very much for joining us today to go through that incredibly interesting game we just had there yeah thank you very much for having me that was an amazing game and yeah it, i really really enjoyed it and watching it back as well <laughs> yeah thank you so much for having me back no worries Amy. it was brilliant um but again thank you very much for everyone that's watched the video um don't forget please do like and subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell to know when the next video is up and we will see you next time.